In this video, we're going to discuss acute inflammation, um, the cellular events in acute inflammation specifically. In the last video, we discussed the vascular changes, change in permeability and vasodilation. And in this video, we're going to discuss the cellular events, leukocyte recruitment and activation. So leukocytes are white blood cells. white blood cells and the white blood cells um, specifically neutrophils are responsible for killing the microbes uh, consuming bacteria and phagocytize you know engulf and chew up uh, bad parts um, of cell debris and uh, pathogens and they're responsible for cleaning up damaged tissue like in when necrosis happens they're responsible for going in there and kind of cleaning everything up so it's important that leukocytes are recruited and activated to kind of do their job and you know once white blood cells are activated they can they can induce damage they can do damage to to normal host cells and that is um, can be problematic because you know these host cells they're just doing their job and these white blood cells come up and they you know they chew up or eat up or destroy the wrong cells so these white blood cells have a very um, very sh uh, tightly regulated process by which um, they're activated and recruited and we're, let's, let's discuss recruitment so this picture explains in great detail kind of the recruitment of leukocytes. So let me scroll down here. So we have a leukocyte traveling in the bloodstream, a white blood cell. And as we talked about in the previous video, as you have vascular permeability and vasodilation, it actually increases the viscosity of the blood so that the those white blood cells actually slow down and the white blood cells are a lot larger than the red blood cells so they're kind of pushed naturally to the to the the wall if you will of these red blood cells remember this blood this red this art, artery is like this but you know so it's in three dimensions so these white blood cells are pushed towards the sides of these cell walls and on these on these uh you know so let me not jump jump uh too quick to some certain aspects but the first there's four main um or there's kind of steps if you will in the activation of leukocytes the first one is marginization what we talked about in the last video is marginization means that um the blood cell is kind of being pushed and kind of um you know is is moving towards the cell this endothelial layer, layer of this um, blood vessel and rolling is the process by which it starts attaching itself the weakly to the selectin proteins along the side and so there it's kind of rolling along and the more of it it hits it kind of slows it down slows it down to eventually it's you know it attaches pretty firmly to to these um, these proteins and then once it's stably attached to these proteins it will kind of squeeze itself in between these um, you know these endothelial cells and that's why you have uh, vascular permeability is to increase the size of these holes so it's easier to squeeze these guys through um, but also you want other other proteins to come in here too and then it will try to meander its way through um, this extracellular matrix because once it's outside the blood vessel, then it's in the extracellular matrix. And then you know there's t there's you know there's cells around here, you know, and there's let's say the bacteria where it needs to go is right here, you know, and it will it will search out and find and um, it will look for this bacteria or wherever it needs to go. 
So the steps of uh, leukocyte activation um, are these. You have marginization, adhesion to the endothelium and rolling, so that kind of that first step. You have firm adhesion to the endothelium. You have transmigration between the endothelial cells and then the migration in the interstitial tissues toward a chemotactic stimulus. So this is what we talked about. So marginization as this as this uh, white blood cell is being you know pushed towards or migrating towards this wall there's the P selectin and the E selectin proteins right here. Now normally these endothelial cells do not have these proteins but as um, these microphages that have these little, you know, these uh, little pieces of protein. Remember that the microphages are already, some microphages are already out inside the tissues. And so once they start, um, um, you know, once there's a problem, then they start, you know, gobbling up or destroying, trying to start this process of destroying this invader. And they secrete these little these little chemicals, these tumor necrosis factor and interleukin-1 to these endothelial cells. And then these endothelial cells will say, okay, hey, we got a problem here. And then what they'll do is that these P-selectin and E-selectin proteins are already inside the cell here. But then they'll pop up. They'll express them onto their cell surface. They're like little flags saying, hey, you know, I'm over here. Uh, you know, I need some help you know there's a problem so they'll start they'll pop up these P selectin and E selectin little proteins and then that's when these leukocytes start grabbing on and attaching to all of these um, you know of these P selectin and E selectin proteins and so then they start getting firmly attached if you will to to the cell wall now these chemokines right here <clears throat> these are these are inflammatory uh, markers, if you will. These kind of are secreted by other cells, uh, you know, microphages that are out here, leukocytes that are already involved in the process. They start secreting these chemokines, and these chemokines, they go up and they um, <clears throat> kind of signal the cell to to make a conformational change or, or to make a change to this integrin right here to turn it into a high affinity state. And what that means is that at a very biochemical nature, at a very biochemical level, this protein has one shape. Let's say it's like in this case it has it comes to a little peak. Well then these chemokines tell the cell, hey, you know, we really need you out here, so we need you to need you to be firmly attached to these endothelial cells so you can stop, you know, because there's still blood flowing through here, so it's wanting to push this uh, leukocyte down down the pipe here, but it needs it to stop completely so it can it can move out into the extracellular matrix. So then it changes from a low affinity state to a high affinity state, which means at a biochemical level the molecules change so that it will attach very strongly to this ICAM1 molecule that's on this endothelial cell. So then once it changes that then it will attach very strongly to this molecule to, to stop it dead in its tracks. You know, so you, once there's, you know, that's why they say this is rolling is because, you know, it takes more than just one kind of bond between these ligands to stop this uh, leukocyte from keep rolling down the pipe. So once it's completely stopped, then, you know, it expresses these molecules here and it, and it comes out into the extracellular matrix. Now this process is called diapedesis. Diapedesis is kind of a fun word and it just means that the process of a white blood cell or any kind of cell moving out from the from a vessel, usually the venule um, moving into the extracellular matrix. That's diapedesis. That's kind of a fun word like apoptosis.
but anyways, so that will come out in it will diapodes out into the extracellular matrix. Now, once these microphage or sorry, these leukocytes, neutrophils, in most cases, are outside that have diapodes out, they undergo chemotaxis. Chemotaxis. So how I remember this is, you know, taxi, like a taxi, a taxi moves you from point A to point B. And chemo refers to chemicals. So it's moving from point A to point B via chemical message, messengers or chemical signals, if you will. So let me explain that process. It gets a little in detail but stick with it, don't push pause, don't push stop, and watch the whole video, and hopefully you can learn something. Because um, I've sure learned a lot and reviewed a lot by doing these videos. So anyways, this. so let's just take this cell here, and let's just say, let me just delete this right here. Edit. Okay, so that's gone. So let's just take this cell right here and let's just say the bacteria is over here that it's trying that this cell needs to get to. It needs to get to this bacteria to start gobbling it up. So let's say there's already some cells over here. There's already some cells over here trying to destroy this bacteria. And <clears throat> What happens is that this cell needs to move over to this to this bacteria. And remember this is it's not like a highway straight, you know, there's not like a, you know, a road, you know, straight to this this bacteria, you know, where he can just kind of hobble along. You know, that's that's not that's not it. There there's no highway inside and this is a three-dimensional space. So you have this extracellular matrix. You have this fibrin and fibronectin extracellular matrix, which are just, you know, which are just, you know, part of your body that is just there's little molecules that help kind of keep its structure, and they're just kind of all over. So it's like, imagine you're in a you're a monkey in the jungle, and you got all these vines that you have to kind of hold on to and navigate to to kind of get over to this bacteria. So chemotaxis is the process by which that happens. And there's some major players in chemotaxis that will kind of help us do that. And let me just put those out. Now, <clears throat> how this um, leukocyte gets kind of, kind of meanders and, and moves over towards this bacteria is there's kind of four main um, chemical uh, signals, if you will, that kind of attract it over here. This is, you know, like, you can imagine, this is kind of like one of those police dogs, and he's trying to sniff out, um, you know, wherever this bacteria is or wherever this problem is. And there's kind of four scents, if you will, that will kind of help this leukocyte get over here. One of them is the bacterial product. So this bacteria is, you know, releasing its stench, if you will, into this extracellular matrix. It's releasing its kind of, um, uh, you know, its stench, if you will, and it is, you know, and it's more concentrated right next to it than as farther as you get out here. There's less and less and less, and it diffuses out. There's less of, there's less of, less of it. Another one is the cytokines. Another one is the complement of the complement system, particular CA5. And if you don't know what the cytokines or complement um, components of the complement system, you can Google that and explain more about this. And the products of the lip lipooxygenase pathway and the arachidonic acid, particularly leukotriene B4, LTB4. Now these are that you know I'm kudos to the guys that figured figure these specific molecules out but in, to get kind of an intuition of what happens is that this fight if you will between this bacteria and these macrophages or this problem it could be necrosis it could be anything the process of degradation of any kind of 
cell or or substance releases chem, uh, you know these these types of chemicals and closer to the problem there's more there's a bigger concentration so what happens is that on the surface of this leukocyte there's there's uh, uh, receptors and they're the class of a G protein G protein receptors and these G protein receptors will kind of uh, detect, if you will, the concentration of these types of molecules. So on this side of the cell, there's going to be a higher concentration than on this side. So the so the cell will actually extend the there's calcium inside the cell, and it will release some calcium that will help these contract um, help these microfilaments contract out towards the concentration of these products and so then they'll start it'll make a big arm and it will attach to this ex, it will attach to this fibrin and fibronectin here in the extracellular matrix and then it will contract and it will pull itself towards this so once you have the cell here again you know it will do the same process you know, they'll, the, it will sniff out, if you will, or there's just simple receptors, G protein receptors on this cell, and it will say, hey, you know what, there's a lot of concentration of these types of molecules on this side, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend out an arm, it's going to attach to this matrix here, or I'll extend out an arm and attach here, and the calcium stores inside will, you know, help this uh, pseudopod, they call them pseudopods, that these pseudopods will kind of extend out, attached to the extracellular matrix, like the arms of a monkey, and it will pull itself towards here. And it keeps doing this. So then now you have the cell here, and then it will, another pseudopod will come out, attach here, attach here, and it will pull itself towards this due to the concentration of these chemicals. So that is a pretty uh, complicated and pretty neat way that our body has to defend itself against that. And the neutrophils are the cells, the white blood cells that respond first. Um, and then they say every, you know, to six to 24 hours, the most of the cells are neutrophils. And then, you know, after that, in the days, um, you get monocytes, which are another type of white blood cells. And the reason why they think that is because, first of all, neutrophils are more plentiful. There's more neutrophils in the white blood cell. So just out of probability, if you have more of something, it's more likely to, you know, undergo this process. And they also think that it has more uh, integrins and it has more adhesion molecules than the monocytes do. And um, neutrophils, they only last for, you know, 6 to 24 hours. And they only last a, a shorter, they have a, a shorter lifespan. So when they get out here and they start fighting, they'll die pretty quick. They, they'll undergo apoptosis, which then will further, um, you know, cause the inflammation and, and cause this process to, to kill this bacteria or to kill, you know, whatever it needs to through the inflammation process. In the next video, this video is getting kind of long and we just covered leukocyte recruitment so in the next video we're going to cover leukocyte activation which means so as soon as this leukocyte gets out to this bacteria how does it become activated so that's what we'll discuss in the next video